Yes. Member's statement. The member for Torn Hill. Mr. President. Mr. Speaker, we are commemorating a sad anniversary, a series of acts of cruelty that happened 20 years ago, the Rwandan genocide. This was during a, an infamous period without precedence during the history of humanity. This tragedy resulted in the deaths of approximately one million persons with no motive other than their ethnic identity. Over the following years, following the end of the Second World War, the implementation of a racist hierarchy was occurring in Rwanda. Five decades later, these politicians began a perpetual escalation of conflict and had hateful, hateful sentiments. This happened in 1994, and it was a vicious plan, and it resulted in a wave of violence committed against the Tutis. This resulted in an extraordinary number of deaths and injured persons as well as displaced persons. Such a horror, Mr. Speaker. Unfortunately, we still rem are seeing a terrorist movement against Rwandans. In the name of all, the, all those affected, we, we, I would like to say that we will never allow evil to vanquish good. Member statement, the member for Essex. Thank you very much, Speaker. You know, normally I would use my member statement to highlight some of the great things that are happening in my riding. Unfortunately, I have to stand here today to highlight something pretty shameful that's going on in the riding of Essex. There's five schools that are uh, at risk that are looking at, actually in the process of the park process, at risk of being closed in my area. It's Western High School, Harrow High School, General Amherst, Kingsville High, and Harrow Public High. And Speaker, you know, listening to the Minister of Education's uh, answer today to some of our questions about uh, the fact that they're cutting, uh, cutting consultation with the community really emphasizes how tragic and shameful this government's uh, you know, uh, handling of our education system has been. Western High School, Speaker, one of the very few vocational schools in southwestern Ontario. You'd have to go all the way to Sarnia to find another vocational school that deals with some of the uh, kids in our area that have high uh, learning disabilities. It is a refuge. It's a safe haven. We heard that last night at the park consultation. We heard it from students. We heard it from uh, parents. We heard it from faculty. It is one of the only places. Speaker, you know what? In the Windsor Star, there was a report that we're looking for 300 skilled trade jobs right now out of Windsor. That's a place where those skilled trade jobs are trained, where students are trained and can enter the workforce, but the government is going to cut that school from our community. It's absolutely shameful and it's reprehensible. Any, any, uh, any conjecture on the, the Liberals' part to say that they're doing all that they can and they're, they, they maintain stable funding is absolutely ludicrous. They have to fix this issue and have to fix the funding formula. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. <laughs> member statement, the member for Halton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise today and acknowledge some remarkable citizens and business leaders in my riding of Halton. Over the past few weeks, I've been fortunate to attend a series of Chamber of Commerce Community Awards in Oakville, Burlington, and Milton. Now, each of these events had their own unique charm and personality. The events in Burlington and Oakville were focused on leaders in many different business fields, including not-for-profit, heritage, retail, and conservation. The Milton Awards also recognized community leaders, naming its Citizen of the Year and Lifetime Achievement Award. All nominees and the 25 winners were people and businesses who went above and beyond to achieve something great for our community. All of the businesses continue to be the bedrock of our strong local economies. Among the winners were Burlington's Young Entrepreneur of the Year, Dave McSporan, Bottle Media, and Oakville's Business Icon Award went to Pelmorex Media, the Weather Network. Retail Business of the Year in Burlington went to Christie's Chocolates. And Milton's Lifetime Achievement Award winner was Rita Alban Curtis. I can tell you, some of the acceptance speeches were really very inspirational. By celebrating hard work, ingenuity, and passion, these galas are a vital part of keeping our community strong. 
They bring people together to celebrate the successes of our community. I'd like to congratulate all of the winners and nominees, and I look forward to the incredible accomplishments we'll be seeing from Halton residents in the year to come. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Member statement, the member for now oh, you got me. Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I rise in the House today to recognize a dedicated constituent whose hard work and progressive vision have strengthened her community through the revival of the South River Macker Agricultural Society and her participation with other volunteer organizations. Suzanne Learn is the recipient of the 2015 Don Ivins Memorial Community Volunteer Award presented by the South River Lions Club. She is the youngest ever recipient of the award, and her community is thrilled to see her recognized for all her accomplishments. Suzanne has been a member of the Agricultural Society Board for five years and the president for the past four. She is the driving force behind events such as the annual 100-mile dinner, which showcases local farmers, the South River Macker Taffy Pole, and reviving old events such as the, uh, the uh, Fall Agricultural Fair. In addition to her work with the Agricultural Society, Suzanne also volunteers with the United Church's Daisy Chain Drop-In Centre, the South River Public School Student Advisory Committee, and has helped out with the Lions Club Canada Day celebration. A mother of three, three young boys, Suzanne has actively engaged the younger generation to become involved in community events. Leading by example, she is inspiring volunteers of all ages to action. I'm pleased to see her dedication recognized and to share her accomplishments with you today. Congratulations, Suzanne. Thank you. Member statement, the member for Toronto Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, as we've discussed, I'll be asking for unanimous consent for a moment of silence at the end of statements. I want to note the presence of Mr. Teofil Rubigimba and other members of the Rwandan diaspora who are here today. I also want to note my colleague, Ms. Marto, and my colleague, Madame Lalonde, who are speaking to this matter, have spoken and will speak to this matter. Today in this legislature, we mark the 21st anniversary of the launch of the genocide against the Tutsis of Rwanda. Last year, we solemnly recognized the event in this very chamber, an event recognized by the people of Rwanda and globally as Kwibuka. Kwibuka is the Kinyarwanda word for remember. As part of the past ceremonies of Kwibuka, survivors have spoken movingly of the horrors of the Rwandan genocide. As horrible as the experiences were for those who died during them or lived through them, they are even more painful because they were preventable. Rwandans died while the international community looked the other way or was actively complicit. The facts are staggering. As cited by MP Erwin Kotler, in quote, less than 100 days beginning on April 7, 1994, one million Rwandans, mostly ethnic Tutsis, were slaughtered, victims of a government-orchestrated campaign of incendiary incitement and unspeakable violence. Members of the Rwandan community are here with us today to commemorate this somber occasion to remind us that terrible wrongs can rise out of intolerance, hatred, and racism. I ask this House for unanimous consent for a moment of silence to commemorate all those who were lost and to carry forward the memory of what they went through so we can avoid such genocides in the future. Thank you. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statement, the member for Ottawa Orleans. Merci, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is a pleasure to discuss today, to speak on this subject. In 1994, a genocide was perpetrated against the Tutsis in Rwanda. It has been called as the, the most horrible acts of humanity. The genocide remains in the memories of Rwandans. Between 800,000 and 1 million persons, children, children and women were killed during a short period. This represents more than 80% of the population that was killed. Lingers today. The Rwandan people share a common history, religion, and have done so for centuries. This genocide was not random. It was ethnic divisions 
that were strengthened and brought about this terrible tragedy. has been designated by the United Nations as the International Day of Reflection of the Genocide in Rwanda. Our thoughts during this time of commemoration are with the people of Rwanda as well as with the survivors. The victims will always be remembered and they will never be forgotten. I hope that the entire world will rise together to say never again. The international community to stay never again. Merci. Thank you. Thank you. Member statement. The member for Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke. Thank you, Speaker. The cost of hydro continues to escalate beyond belief. Municipalities all across the province, including those in my riding of Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke, are extremely frustrated with Ontario's skyrocketing rates, which have tripled since the Liberal came in, Liberals came into power in 2003. These unaffordable rates are a product of the smart meter fiasco, gas plant scandals, and the mother of all energy disasters, the Green Energy Act. Every day, our municipal partners hear from residents who find themselves in desperate situations. Average Ontarians have to choose between filling up the car, buying groceries, or paying their hydro bill. The exorbitant cost of electricity is also driving business to consider leaving Ontario. The township of Madawaska Valley, in my riding, is one of many municipalities that has fallen victim to the Liberals' failed energy policies, making it hard for residents and businesses to afford hydro and to ultimately thrive and prosper. In response to these outrageous rates, the Council of the Township of Madawaska Valley has passed a resolution that calls on the Premier to mitigate current rates and prevent any further rate increases from being implemented. The Township of Admiston Bromley has passed a similar resolution. It's an impossible situation for municipalities because it's the provincial policies that are making hydro unaffordable. Minister, this is not just a plea from the official opposition. It crosses all political lines and comes from all levels of government. This is unaffordable, unsustainable, and you have got to change course. Thank you. Thank you. Member statement, the member for Brampton Springdale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, today I stand in this house to speak on the festival of Vasaki. Vasaki is a harvest festival traditionally celebrated by farming communities. It symbolizes the changing of the seasons and the coming of spring. Falling in the middle of April, it marks the harvest of winter crops. The festival is celebrated as a, as a Thanksgiving Day by the farmers to pay tribute to a successful harvest. Mr. Speaker, Vasaki is an important day for the Sikh religion. On this day in 1699, as, as thousands of Sikhs gathered at Anandpur Sahib to celebrate the festival of Vasaki, Guru Gobind Singh Ji, the 10th Sikh Guru, laid the foundations of the Khalsa and of the Sikh Articles of Faith. On this day, the surname of Sikh was, uh, Singh was created to remove all barriers of a caste system which allowed people to be distinguished or segregated based on a surname. A social revolution which promoted equality had begun, one which judges no person based on their gender, race, religion, or color. Sikhism's teachings of commitment to justice and equality are values that are not only cherished by members of the Sikh community, but are the values shared by all Canadians. The festival of Vasaki also includes processions, otherwise known as the Nagarkirtan or the Khalsa Day Parade. Mr. Speaker, I would like to wish all of those celebrating a very happy Vasaki, and I would like, I would also like to encourage all members of the House to join in celebrations in their ridings, which will be held across all over Ontario in the coming weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Member statement. The member for Barry. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in memory of a beloved community leader and business owner from Craighurst who passed away on March the 18th. Floyd Sinton was a man who dedicated his life to his family and the families in his community. I first met Floyd and his wonderful wife, Barb, at a Halloween costume party. They were the life of the party. As an educator, I later, later dealt with Floyd and Barb as they picked up and dropped off students at Forest Hill School in Midhurst. Not only did they transport our students with care, compassion and humour, things needed by the school would suddenly appear after speaking to them. 
As we debated Bill 31, I often thought of him when we talked about school buses. The safety of those children was paramount to the sentence. At the age of 16, Floyd was working with his dad at their family-owned service station in Craighurst. It was at that time that Floyd borrowed $900 from his father to buy a 20-passenger bus. From this one bus, Floyd started his business and began transporting students daily to and from Barrie. The business grew from, one, from that one route to a company with 500 employees servicing the communities of Collingwood and Newmarket with various contracts with local school boards, who, which was run by their late son, Stan. Floyd and Barb and Stan also consistently donated time, money and resources to many local organizations. Floyd was a remarkable man who gave much to his community, his family and his friends. He will be sorely missed. Thank you. The member for Toronto Danforth has asked for a unanimous consent to observe a moment of silence in remembrance of the Rwandan genocide. Is there a consent? Agreed. Agreed. Would everyone join me in standing for a moment of silence? Thank you.